back folks to the very last video in the cell unit. We are going to be looking at how materials are able to move through the cell membrane. Now there are lots of different materials that are found inside of the body and some of the materials have to find unique ways to be able to get in and out of the cells in order to provide nutrients and things like that to the cell. So we're going to look at how those materials are able to move in and out of the cellular membrane. So hopefully by this video you should be able to understand and determine the different types of transport of materials in and out of the cell. So as you mentioned before, vocabulary is a very, very big thing in biology class and in this particular video is no exception. Hopefully you'll be able to understand what these are as we go through and as we continue to work on them in class. So let's talk about some different types of ways that materials are transported in and out of the cell. And the first one is known as passive transport. Now the term passive means, it's like if, you have, if you're passive in class, you just kind of sit there, you're kind of not paying attention, you're just kind of being lazy. So passive transport requires no energy whatsoever. Now an example of passive transport is simple diffusion. That is where the movement of the molecules is directly across the cell membrane. So they do not require any type of proteins. They can just go right through the membrane. So if we take a look, the picture indicates that they have to be small and they also have to be nonpolar. And the reason they have to be nonpolar is that they have to be able to get through the middle part of the phospholipid bilayer. And if we remember, the middle part is lipids and lipids are nonpolar. If these molecules were polar molecules, then the lipids would repel them, preventing them from being able to get into the cell. So simple diffusion has to be molecules that are small, and they have to be molecules that are nonpolar. And they also go from a high to a low concentration. A good way to think about that is if like somebody sprays perfume or sprays like you know, some sort of body smell good thing in class. Most people can smell that right away, and you can smell that right away because there is a high concentration of those molecules. But as diffusion occurs, those molecules spread evenly throughout the classroom. When those molecules spread throughout evenly, you can't smell them anymore. That is a movement from a high concentration to a low concentration and requires no energy whatsoever. So as we look over here on the right, over time, we see the small nonpolar molecules are all on one side of the membrane. As they diffuse through the membrane, they even themselves out until the concentration of molecules is even on the inside and the outside of the cell membrane. So that is the concept of passive transport. It requires no energy at all. And this also shows simple diffusion that the molecules move across the membrane from a high concentration to a low concentration until both sides have the same concentration of molecules. Now another example of this is osmosis. And if you remember we talked about before, the molecules will move across the membrane from a high to a low concentration until the concentrations are equal. Well, in osmosis, we're looking at what's called a semi-permeable membrane or selectively permeable. So in this instance, in that U-shaped tube, the purple molecules cannot move from the right to the left. Now, that would be the way they would want to diffuse because there's higher concentration on the right and lower concentration on the left. So the purple molecules will move left until there's an equal number on both sides. But in this instance, that membrane prevents the purple molecules from moving over. So instead of the molecules, the purple molecules moving to the left, what's going to happen is that the water is going to move the opposite direction. Now, while that doesn't result in an equal number of the purple molecules on each side, it does give you an equal concentration. That is, the same number of purple parts per unit of water. On the right side now, as we look at the end, there are more purple dots, but there's also more water, which evens out the concentration. On the left side of the membrane, there are fewer purple dots, but fewer water. So while there are a different number of dots and water, the concentrations are the same. Okay, and an easy way to remember the direction the water flows in osmosis is the concept of salt sucks. You notice that there is a higher concentration of purple dots on the right, so the water is going to move that direction to dilute that side until there's an equal concentration on both sides. I know that's a bit complex and confusing, but you'll see what we mean when we practice it in class. 
So an easy way to kind of remember this, like I said, we've talked a little bit about osmosis, and the first term we need to understand is what's called isotonic. The word iso means equals. So an isotonic solution is where there's an equal amount of solute in and out of the cell, so water moves in and out at the same rate. Hypertonic means that there's higher solute in the solution on the outside, so water moves outside of the cell. Hypotonic is, means that there's a lower solute in the solution. So since there's lower solute in the solution, the water is going to move into the cell. So we'll look at percentages and practice with these as we get a little bit more experience. Another type of transport that is passive is known as facilitated diffusion. And facilitated diffusion is where the movement of molecules occurs with the aid of a protein channel. So this occurs with molecules that are larger, they can't simply diffuse through the cell membrane. And they also work with molecules that are polar because they can't diffuse through the membrane due to the polarity of the lipids in the bilayer. So these also go from a high to low concentration. That's why it's still passive transport. It does not require any energy. And they move through that protein channel. So keep in mind, facilitated diffusion is the movement of molecules with a protein channel, and they're typically going to be larger molecules, and they're also going to be molecules that are polar as well. Now, another type of transport is known as active transport. And this is a movement of molecules with the aid of a protein that goes against the concentration gradient, which means that we go from a low to a high concentration. Now this is very, very difficult and requires a lot of energy. If you go back to the perfume example, if we spray that in class, it goes from a high concentration to a low concentration. Well, to have active transport there, we would have to take each of those molecules of perfume and actually put it back in the bottle. That requires a ton of energy to be able to do so and goes against what would normally happen. Normally those molecules are going to diffuse across the room evenly from a high to a low concentration. Now with active transport this requires energy to be able to take place and that's because again it goes from a low to a high concentration. So keep that in mind, active transport requires that protein and because it goes against the concentration gradient we require some energy in order to make that happen. Now when we're talking about even larger molecules that go in and out of the cell, we refer to endo and exocytosis. The root endo refers to in, and cyto means cell, so these are large molecules that are moving into the cell. Exocytosis refers to the large molecules that are moving out of the cell. Now how this works is that the cell membrane engulfs the large materials going in and then transports them typically to the Golgi apparatus to be shipped to other parts of the cell. The same thing as if we are taking things out. You notice the vesicle there on the left is kind of fusing with the cell membrane and then pushing the material outside of the cell. So endocytosis would refer to when we're taking things in and endoexo is when we refer to moving things out process is still the same. We form those vesicles. Those vesicles are made up of components of the cell membrane, such as the phospholipid bilayer, and they are essential in moving large molecules in and out of the cell. So we take a look here. This is a just a quick review of passive and active transport. Keep in mind that passive transport, things like regular diffusion, do not require a protein. They go from a high to low concentration and go simply across the cell membrane, not requiring any energy. Facilitated diffusion, very similar. They also go from a high to low concentration, not requiring any energy, but require a channel protein because the molecules are large or they may be polar. Now active transport, we go from a low concentration to a high concentration. It does also require a protein, but it also requires energy because we're going against the concentration gradient. Hopefully you guys understand that materials move in and out of the cell in a variety of different ways. Passive transport requires no energy, such as diffusion and facilitated diffusion and osmosis. Well, active transport requires energy and moves those materials across the concentration gradient from a low concentration to a high concentration. Again, hopefully you have a better understanding of the materials in this video. We'll talk a little bit more in class about this and go from there. Again, hopefully you enjoyed this video and hopefully you enjoyed the cell as a unit. Moving forward, we are going to start talking about how cells obtain their energy through the processes of photosynthesis and cellular respiration. We hope you had a good day, guys, and we will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.